David. Mike, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Now that Dax had a chance to visit with the medical staff, what can you tell us about what he will and won't be clear to do this week? Uh, Dak Prescott, well, he'll be in the rehab group today. Um, you know, until he had a good visit with the doctor yesterday. So the next step is to get enough strength um, in the hand to, to throw the football. So uh, he will work exclusively uh, with Britt Brown today. Okay. Uh, we've talked a lot about the September football unscouted looks. Was it more challenging to navigate the first month of the season because of the, the uncertainties regarding your own team uh, through this first month of September? And how do you think you guys have done? I mean, it should sound like you're in a team meeting today. I, I think um, September football, the first quarter, first four games of the year, uh, we, you know, did a you know an in-depth sell Scott with with the football team, and it's just like anything. I mean, you're, you're doing these these studies, and it's part of your evaluation every week. But now, now you have four weeks to push it all together. So uh, just you know, heightening awareness and urgency, particularly in in like like anything it comes down to the fundamentals. Uh, talked about the unscouted looks. Um, I, I think clearly, you know, when you when you look at the start of our season offensively, you know, it, it isn't. It's not that we were holding back from what we're doing because of our because of Cooper Rush. I think it was just more the you know the other changes that you know we're going on around. So now that you know now Michael Gallup's come back, I think we you know we're starting to get some continuity at the left left side of the line. So those are the things we're focused on. Um, but you know we we, we have uh, navigated the the first quarter fairly well. Uh, you know, with a three three and one record, but the exciting part for us is the amount of improvement that's in front of us, and that's really where we've got to keep our eye on the target. As far as you know, self Scott, you know, now we have put four weeks of uh, video out there, um, so that's really who you really are, uh, and that's what the Rams are preparing for, and, and that's what we got to focus on. Because at the end of the day, you know, today and tomorrow we'll really focus on the Rams and what they do and how we think they're going to come at us. But we need we we got a lot of house cleaning to do. We got to clean our own house, and and we got we got to get things you know improved on and, and and that's where our guys are at mike todd archer with espn on dak for a second what does his rehab look like what does he do for that thumb when he's with Britt and specifically it, yeah it, like when he's out on the field is it Oh, well, you guys are good you guys are really good and it's safe to say he will not be available this week yeah. well, i'm not kidding he's in rehab mode uh the exact specific exercises that he's doing for his thumb um, I can't tell you if he's working with clay or Nerf balls or whatever. It's and I apologize. I did not check in uh, with the training staff. So he's I mean, hey, he's doing everything he can. I mean, we we all know that. Uh, you know, he's he, he was here yesterday. Obviously, here again early this morning. So um, until he gets in the, his first step for football, from my view, was will be when he is, is inserted into the quarterback school. And uh, so he's working with the rehab group today. He will not be part of the quarterback school. Michael Gelkin, Dallas Morning News. What's the outlook for Jordan Lewis following the pregame for a injury? Uh, Jordan Lewis and and uh, actually Donald, Donovan Wilson will, will work with Britt in the pre-practice. You know, just, uh, you know, just Donald just being just watching his his rep numbers and so forth. And these are things, you know, coming off of his injury last year. So we're just being smart with him. Uh, but uh, Jordan, we'll see how he gets through this. Um, so based off the, how the, the preliminary work goes, during the uh, special teams and the O&D fundamentals uh, will de determine how much team they will take. So I guess you could put them in a limited category as far as the, out, you know, the outlook. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Uh, what's your plans at deep snapper? Looks like you lost uh, Jake. Little... Yeah, we brought in two. Yeah, unfortunately we lost Jake. I mean, just, uh, you know, what a what an ace for us, you know, in, in the locker room and uh, just, a, just a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, but you know, I you know, you think about he's gone what 10, 12 years, 12 years, and hasn't missed a game. So, but yeah, we we have we have two snappers that we signed. Uh, you know, we have we have the veteran, you know, and we have the young guys. So we're gonna we're gonna let those guys compete, and we're gonna get a look at them today, and uh, work you know work some before and after practice, and we'll see how the the week shakes out. Clark in Washington, how close are they to getting their practice? Winner? Clark Clark will uh, actually be activated today, so you'll get to see the moan out there today. So everybody's excited about that. What about Washington? No, he's not yet. Coach Patrick Walker, DallasCowboys.com. How close last week was Curse to returning, and how does he look for this week? Uh, he's he's slated to go uh, full full practice today, so you know ho hopefully we'll just uh, work through the week, you know week week preparation and be ready to go. But you know as far as you know last week, I would say he was close, uh, but. 
you know, once again, it's the, the, the beauty of this week for, you know, for guys coming off it, they'll have a full week to get through it. So I think, you know, with the limited work last week coming off the Monday night game, you know, I, I don't know if there was enough work for really a guy could get, get comfortable come, come, coming off of the, you know, the injuries that, you know, particularly those guys were dealing with. Babe. Babe Lofenberg, Cowboys Radio. Um, how gratifying was it to go through the game Sunday, four penalties, obviously an area of emphasis. And, and not only that, there, were over, there was over 100 yards difference in penalty yardage between you and one. <laughs> Oh, definitely. I, I mean, you know, it, it obviously factored, uh, you know, particularly in field position. I, I think it was probably one of the, the biggest advantage for us uh, was the penalties for, for field position. Now we need to, you know, get to winning it outright, you know, with our with, the, with our takeaways and, and uh, uh, return game and, and moving the football. So, yeah, I mean, really, I, I look at penalties more, more from the, the self scout of it. I mean, I, I addressed it today. Um, you know, our pre snap penalties are too high. We went back through all four weeks uh, in a team meeting and, you know, addressed specific, the specifics of it. And, and more importantly, how can we improve on it? Because, I mean, it's like one thing I mean, you put a bunch of statistics up there and, and, and jump around a little bit. That, that's, you know, that's not really the answer. So, how, how, do you, how do you work on it? How do you improve on it? And, you know, and to me, it starts in the walkthroughs and it's, you know, it's that pace of operation, mind speed, all the things that you know we're working for we do a hell of a job around here as far as how we practice in the physical output that we're putting in each week and how it's measured and the education behind it science behind it and that's you know clearly reflected in in just the numbers you know as far as fatigue injuries and things that we deal with on a on a you know really on a yearly basis so uh, there's a lot of you know uh, history that goes into that but you know we we got to find ways to work on those things because we, we're it's not good enough right now i'm talking about the pre-snap the pre-snap penalties so uh we need to be better there i got to be better there uh, because uh, right now i don't like what our numbers are mike with aaron donald when you're looking at the rams games how quickly does your eyes just find where he is on the field well, you, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you get off the bus, you better look around. I mean, because I mean, that's that's the kind of player he is. Um, so, I mean, he's from Pittsburgh. What can you expect? But, um, no, he's uh, he's he's dynamic. I mean, he's he's a game wrecker. Uh, we 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 recognize that. And uh, but you know, most important, I, I think it's you know we you get into you know h how you're going to line up against a an impact player like that. You can't make a bunch of changes, wholesale changes, because now now your players are slowing down and, and thinking and not stepping as fast so I think the biggest thing for us is you know we, we recognize you know the type of player he is where you know where he's going to line up and and how we want to execute against him but man we, we just got to really we, we just we, we want to be better up front I, mean, I know our guys are excited about the challenge uh, but really our, our focus is on self-improvement I mean we're you know we're, we're into the game plan process uh, with the players today but I, I just know the vibe in there is you know hey we won three games but we, we just know we can be we can be you know a lot better so that's where our focus is down in NBC Five. Um, last week, you guys had the short week playing that game to play on Sunday. This week, they have that. Um, can you just kind of speak to? <coughs> we've gotten used to seeing teams play on Monday night, now, but it does seem like it makes it a lot more challenging when you lose that one day because every day seems so valuable. I mean, it definitely does. And then you know, throw in the travel part of it. I mean, to their benefit, they probably didn't have to travel very far from you know San Francisco to LA. But I mean, I'll, I'll just, from our personal experience coming back from uh, New York, I mean, that's. That's a grinder. I mean, you get back at 4:30 in the morning, and it, you know it affects Monday and Tuesday, and and really carries over into Wednesday. And uh, frankly, uh, just because of the kind of game, you know, we, we came out of a division game no different than them. I mean, it could it definitely probably even factors what you do on Thursday too. So uh, it's part of it. It's part of the challenge. I mean, we all get the schedules back in May, uh, so you have time to plan and, and and recognize those stress points of of scheduling. You know, and, you know I've already noted the, the traveling is part of that. You know calculation of stress to your football team um, but you know at the end of the day uh, it, does it give us an advantage yeah I hope so I mean that's the way we're looking at it I mean we got you know we're preparing and uh, we just need to max out our preparation part of it and you know but the other you know flip side of it sometimes when you do lose a game it, it is better to get up and play quickly uh, I've always felt that way I mean I, I know when things didn't go well uh, I thought it was a, a benefit for your football team to get back out there and get going so you know we're, we're looking at this as a, a national game obviously it's the Cowboys and the Rams, and uh, I think there's going to be a whole lot of urgency come Sunday afternoon. And I wanted to ask you about Cooper Cup as well. I mean, not schematically how you're going to try and stop him, but at the same time, just you know how dynamic he is. Now. Well, I'll, I'll just say this, uh, and, and it's you see it time and time again, but you don't 
just go back to the Super Bowl. I mean, you know, the last 10 plays of that game, I mean, he's he's targeted it eight times. I think the other two were throwaways. So, I mean, he's and he caught seven of them. So, um, uh, that's a connection that him and Matthew have, and, and, you know, we're well aware of it. And, I mean, he's a fine, fine football player. For Damone, we've seen how missing a couple of weeks in the spring can set back a young player. He's missed everything. What are, what's a realistic expectation for what, if anything, he'll be able to do for the team this season? Uh, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, we're all excited about him. I mean, you can't, how can you not? You just see, you know, obviously the player, um, he was in college, you know, coming out. And, um, and just more importantly, just – you know how he's been since he's been here. I mean, I mean, this young man's here every day. I mean, I'm talking weekend. He's here all the time. Uh, so um, he's ready. I mean, he, he's you know, and I, I think our medical staff and 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 Demone himself. You know, the the, the patience has been tough you know, because uh, just you know how how the whole, whole injury unfolded and so forth. So um, my point is, I, I think the rehab process is is complete, and I'm and I'm personally happy we waited as long as we did, because now this young man can jump in there full speed. But yeah, he, he hasn't put on pads in a year and a half. So I mean, let's let's not be, you know, let's be realistic about that. So it'll be good to get out, get him out here to work. I'd like to see where he is, you know, at the end of the week. But I mean, it's, you know, in a lot of ways, he's, you know, he's like a guy that, you know, just showed up at training camp and uh, missed ramp up and missed the whole off season program. So, you know, we got to, you know, he just needs to work and it'll, it'll be great to have him out there. You've gone against Matthew Stafford quite a bit in, in your career. Just your thoughts on him and, and what it says about him to come from the situation he did into a team where it was like you're the missing piece and then deliver in that first year. Just how difficult that is. I, I think the first thing you got to recognize he delivered, you know, and, and, and that's a credit to Matthew Stafford. Always had, you know, tremendous amount of respect for him. Um, obviously, while he was in Detroit, and you know we played a lot of games against each other, and I, I go back to his, you know, his rookie year. You know, I think he played through a shoulder injury that was pretty significant. Uh, so you knew right away that you know, forget about the arm talent and all that. I mean, this this guy's a he's a warrior. Um, so uh, he can make all the throws. He, he has, uh, he, and frankly, you could see it in our training camp practice, you know, last year, and you could see the connection that he has with Cooper, um, Cooper Cup, and and, and his teammates. So. Um, this, he will be a big challenge for us. Mike, how do you think Mike has handled the on-field attention that he gets uh, from the other team? How has he handled it? I mean, it's constant. I, I think that you know is number one, and and, and and I think it just is reflected the type of you know impact impact player that he is. But no, I think he's dealing with it uh, in, in a good way. Um, so I mean, he, he's a team player. Uh, you know, it, it's. It's been awesome just to you know, to watch him, you know, mature and and come on and in some of the other areas, you know, outside of just playing. So, um, I mean, it's, he's going to be dealing with the rest of his career. I mean, it's not going away anytime soon. So, and and I just think Dan and the staff and uh, you know we we're very cognizant of it and, and we got to keep trying to you know create targeting issues uh, not only for the offense but make sure we're giving him opportunities to make plays. Is it any different than what he saw last year uh, as he, he well, grew into what he became? I, I would say yes. So I just sort of the fact that they, they have more video on him, you know. So now, you know, he, he he has he has tendencies from you know when he plays the open end in normal D and D, you know. So are they trying to run the ball at him? So those types of things. So I mean, those are the things we're we're very aware of, and uh, and just making you know making sure we continue to give him opportunities where he can make plays. Okay. Uh, you guys have had more third and seven pluses than anybody. Thanks. I see the, I see the, well, you, yeah. I'm not. I don't think I'm enlightening you here, but uh, obviously, number one, you want to not be in those. But number two, you know, they're almost day to game. Do you work on? Are you spending more time in practice on those, knowing that we've got a lot of third and seven plus? We actually started um, more third down work week two. You know, coming out of week one because that was obviously a, uh, a detriment to the to the opener. Uh, but the reality of it is, it's you know, it's first and second down needs to be better. Um, you know, if you look at just last week's game against Washington, I mean, you know, it's six negative runs. I mean, that, that's, I mean, I, I don't care who you're playing or, you know, at what level, that, that's that's not where you want to be on second down. So, um, and that's where we're focused on. And that's, you know, that's part of the South Scott. And, um, you know, it's like anything, you don't want to sit here and beat your guys up over the things that didn't go right because we got a whole lot that's going, that is going right. And we got a lot of, a lot of good things that came out of the four week self scout, but that's that's definitely third down. We need to be better on both sides, frankly. CD has seen about a third of the team's targets. He's third highest in the NFL in terms of target share for his respective team. You guys are getting him those opportunities. How important 
is that for that to continue? Do you feel for the success of this offense, or is that is that is, how mindful is that? Well, it's definitely part of the game plan. I mean, I, and I, I think just like anything, when you you see a game plan go together, and you know, and the most importantly, you know, play the play, play caller and Kellen, I, I think it just you know tells you when when you accomplish what you set out to accomplish as far as ball distribution, you know, uh, that's that's where you want to be now. You, the other part behind that is, you know, he's getting the targets, but, you know, what's going on around him? You know, we're, you know, we talk about we drive 55 plus, you know, 55 mile an hour, Sammy Hagar, if you're wondering. But uh, it's, you know, but we're only at 45 right now after four games. So, I mean, we're, my point is we're not getting the ball distributed, you know, distributed. Uh, 55 uh, ball distribution a game is the goal. Um, you know, first we've got to get our, our play count up. That will come with production on first and second down, obviously the third down conversions. But, you know, we want to be better there. You know, we want to be better not only just getting CD as targets because he will perform and be productive, but we need to get the ball distributed, you know, between Zeke, Tony, and the other perimeter players. The, the, the running backs haven't been especially involved along those lines in terms of backfield catches. Uh, in the that, passing game was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your you, you running backs don't have a whole lot of receptions thus far. Um, what are your thoughts about that being a bit lower this year? Well, we're lower all, all the way around. I mean, you know, our run attempts are lower. You know, you, if you look at the way the way we're playing, you go, wow, you know, run attempts are lower than last year, but so sort are of the pass attempts. So uh, it's just we're not, you know, we're, we're not getting enough attempts at the plate right now. So that's, you know, that, that's the primary focus, which points you to first and second down production. So uh, running backs, you know, I, I've never really concerned myself. Um, with the number of touches, uh, you know, in the passing versus the run game, most important thing is for them to touch the ball. Um, and the other part of that is to make sure that the run blocking unit is coming off the ball because that's where you – that's to me. That's where you need balance. You know, uh, people. You know, you want to talk about the production in our run game last week uh, was not very good. Yeah, but the most important thing is we ran it 26 times. You know, those are body blows. Those are th those are things that are needed in the course of a game. So we just need to be better. All right. Good. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.